startuprad.io, your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Hello and welcome, everybody. This is Joe from startuprad.io bringing you another sponsored podcast by Invest in Hessen. Invest in Hessen is backed by Hessen Trade and Invest, which is the investment promotion agency of the German state of Hessen or Hesse. If you like what you're seeing or hearing, hit the like and subscribe button. And if you're on YouTube, make sure to ring the notification bell. That said, today I'm bringing you a startup in the person of Benjamin from the very north of Hessen from Kassel. Hey, Benjamin, how are you doing up there? Hi, I'm fine. Thank you. Always a pleasure having you here. Um, we talked that you are um, actually based in the state of Hessen in the very north in Kassel. I just looked it up here on um, Google Maps and actually it takes about two hours to get there by car, but due to the ICE high-speed train connection, just one hour by train. Um, and um, nonetheless, it's a very lovely city. Um, I've been there just a few times, but I very liked it. That said, let's get a little bit into you into your life, into what you're telling the people in LinkedIn. As always, everybody who'd like to learn more or reach out to you, they can go down here in the show notes. There is a link to our blog post. And on our blog post, you'll of course find your personal LinkedIn profile so people can reach out directly to you. That said, you actually started um, more in marketing and consulting in your life, right? Uh, yes, I uh, started uh, with my degree in business administration with a focus on marketing and sales. And after uh, my degree, I decided to move forward in different companies, companies and positions, always in the field of marketing, products, sales. Yeah, that was my focus in the past. Actually, what I found most interesting is the legendary uh, camera company called Leica. What did you actually do there? Because it says something you, like UAV. That's right. That's right. So what you need to know about Leica is that Leica is only a brand. And there is Leica camera, there's Leica hunting, and there's Leica geosystems. And the family behind Leica decided to sell the brand to yeah different technologies. Um, and Leica is the brand um, above all these areas, but Leica Geosystems is 100% focused on, um, yeah, geographical data management, more or less. So land surveyors, uh, but also surveying from um, above, which could mean from, from airborne or from satellites, but also from UAV. And I was in a division that was more or less focused on mobile mapping, and mobile mapping also includes all um, new technologies could be laser scanning, could be uh, scanning with cars, so such as uh, here or Google or Apple are using for um, their maps. Um, and I was responsible for the UAV business. Mm, I see, I see. Uh, UAV in this context means unmanned aerial vehicle? That's right. That's right. So it was pretty easy, but um, since uh, the company I worked for started in 2011, uh, it was something new in 2011. And uh, I, I think it's also something new if you tell somebody, okay, you don't need uh, to have a land surveyor uh, for um, the survey task. You could use an, an, an UAV or a drone. Uh, but the easy thing is it was just a, a, a flying thing with a with a, a camera. Uh, that's it. <laughs> and all the magic comes from uh, the software, which works with the data with, with, which was captured before from the drone. Ha, huh, you are in uh, in like half a year, the second startup I have from Hessen um, working with or on drones. Um, because, uh, I've, I've been talking just recently to the guys from Wingcopter. That's it. That's Leica is 
actually not the startup you founded. No, 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 no. But you worked there. And from what I see in your CV is actually that's where you had the first contact with drones and then you kept going into the drone direction. Is is that about right? More or less, it is right. Yes. Uh, but um, as always in my lifetime, um, it was not a decision based on a technology. It was a decision based on a market. So what I've learned during my time with Leica Geosystems or Hexagon, Hexagon is the company behind Leica Geosystems, a huge company uh, based in Sweden. Um, uh, what I've learned during this time is that uh, working for the logistics market and using different uh, sensor technologies such as drones or un other mobile solutions could be a good idea because it's really something new for the market and automation and uh, digitalization is something that's yeah more or less in the focus of logistics companies and that's why i moved forward with drones and the ai and and software parts so um we are talking about uavs drones here but you're not actually a hardware startup you guys are doing ai and software right absolutely right right but since you cannot buy uh, the type of drones we are using um in in on the market uh, so this is something pretty new um if you remember your talk with wingcopter i think you've learned that they are flying outside and they are using for the navigation more or less gps based um, navigation software um, and GPS and indoors is something that is not possible so just have a look on your mobile phone and you will see that GPS is uh, yeah not not in a good connection um, so we needed to uh, find a way how to use drones indoors and have an automated or uh, autonomous flight indoors without GPS so we are a, a software startup, but we need to push also hardware on the market. Let me let me get a little uh, take a step back here uh, because we we are already very deep into discussing docs innovations. But um, oh, what what I've been missing so far is uh, how you got the idea. Um, and we may add, uh, I also learned in the Wingcopter interview, which of course I will da link down here in the show notes as well, uh, was there working with the Tilt Rotor technology. If you want to know what this is, go down in the show notes and listen to the interview. And just just uh, a hint from my side, Tom is an absolutely great entrepreneur um, and he's doing very, very well. And I think the rise of Wingcopter will not stop. Uh, I think Corona really helped them, um, and, and they are on a on a on a very very great way. So um, Benjamin did not know that, but I actually interviewed Tom there. So go down here in the show notes. There's the link. Yeah. So so uh, thumbs up for for Tom and his company. Um, and yeah, again again for Hesse, uh, I think Wingcopter is very 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 good. Yeah, so it's very good to see such a company growing here in Hesse. Uh, but coming to your question, uh, why Docs Innovation or why working with drones and logistics? So as I said, um, I always worked in areas uh, such as product management and so on and so on. It's the question, okay, who are your customers or who could be your customer and what what's your market? And before I decided to found Docs Innovation together with my co-founders, um, I also asked myself, okay, um, using drones is a good idea for land surveying, for industrial inspection, and also for some other tasks. But um, are there areas which are not covered in this moment, which also could be interesting? Um, and then I had many, many, many interviews with um, possible customers, so logistics companies and huge industrial players in Germany. Um, it was, yeah, I think something like maybe, maybe, maybe nearly a hundred uh, for uh, one and a half year. 
um, and the feedback I got from from their side was so good that after the feedback, I decided, okay, I I I need to found something, um, and the something then becomes uh, more structured uh, with my co-founders. So um, it was very soon decided that that we will not found uh, a hardware company and that we will focus on on software and artificial intelligence um yeah but but as always you need to have good partners in your team to really start something like this yeah that's the short story <laughs> okay you, you guys are now three co-founders uh how did you split the duties between you guys was also quite easy because we come with uh, different experiences. So Mike comes from the robotics and uh, embedded side, um, and Martin is a real engineer. Um, so it was quite easy at the beginning who is responsible for what. Uh, I was responsible for everything besides the, the development part, which means uh, financial marketing sales hr and so on and so on so more or less uh, business structure and that's why we decided together in the team that i will be the ceo of um, docs innovation and the two other guys they were responsible for um, setting up the development team and yeah help the first prototype and then the series a uh, and yeah step by step so Okay, I see. So let's get a little bit, because Series A funding, we talk a little bit later about it. Um, let's get a little bit into what you guys are actually doing, because I've been looking at your website and you have reference customers like Mars Group. Yes, the one with the chocolate bars, as well as BMW Group. You don't easily get those clients, even if you're a B2B startup. What are you guys doing and what did those companies do? like about what you're doing okay uh coming to mars corporation uh, they do not only sell chocolate bars i, I think the, the most important part of their business is uh, pet food <laughs> um and uh, the mars family is very very much interested in innovation uh, mars works together with different 3pl 3pl means Uh, third-party logistics service providers um, and here in Germany they work together with a company named Richtering uh, and Richtering asked, um, asked okay is there any possibility for our daily um, inventory management um, is there any technology available that could automate our processes and then we presented to them uh, our solution inventory And then they got back to the Mars Corporation. They told them, okay, this is something which could be really interesting for you. Um, and then it was a decision together with the Mars Corporation um, here in Germany. And then in the second step directly from the Mars family in the US, which was absolutely crazy for us because we had a presentation without being at the presentation. So there, there were, was the, the German Mars team who took our drone over to the US uh, and presented it directly to the Mars family. And this was absolutely crazy. Uh, we got great feedback from their side and they uh, see it as a promising technology for logistics and not only for logistics. Um, yeah, but again, it was a crazy situation because it was just based on, on uh, yeah, on, on, on a pilot project um, and, and the first results and they were so happy to see these results, which was good for us. And yeah, this this is the, the, the Mars story. And we, we continue the work together with uh, Richtering at Mars here in Germany. And we will also be in other uh, Mars facilities in the future. Um, coming to BMW, this was not a an, an, uh, classical case for, for us because um, the first technology which was on our roadmap was inventory. So having um, inventory inventory processes indoors areas um, uh, for BMW we were responsible for two use cases it was uh, transport on their production facility in Leipzig 
um, transport via via drones. So something that could also be done by wingcopter. Um, and the second use case was uh, capturing information about rock storage outdoors, um, which was new for us, but um, much more into um, artificial intelligence. So this was this was our first proof that we are really an AI company, um, and we solved the challenge of uh, inventory management on huge outdoor block storage areas for production uh, MPs for BMW, and we did the same for Volkswagen now. Um, so let's get a little bit into the nitty gritty of what you guys are doing, because um, what I learned in the interview with Wingcopter, so basically that is a quadcopter, so meaning it has at least four rotors, uh, and um, it actually flies around inside a building inside like a huge warehouse and it can navigate there and it automatically takes a uh, stock information it scans what is there what you have available uh, where you're running out of stock and stuff like this is it like that can you go a little bit into detail there yeah absolutely right um so the 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 drone uh is nothing more than just a flying camera it helps to get um yeah data from above um and it helps to reduce uh the stuff for such yeah bad work nobody likes to to do inventory management to be very honest um so um the drone is just capturing the data um we combine the drone together with an AGV uh, which helps to navigate through the warehouse And to really have an automated process, because um, yeah, the, the, our customers are always looking for a real automated process. So, which means just push one button and then come back after three or four hours and just get the data. Um, and drones are not able to fly much more than maybe 25 minutes uh, if if you are using drones in in uh, in our size. Um, so. We needed to find a way for the, the for the um, energy management, um, but also for the data management. So, and what we are doing is uh, we are using camera systems and barcode scanners to capture the data, and then we process all the data um, in in the post processing software. Which means that we are capturing really everything, which is good for the customer because we are capturing data and we don't need questions before. We offer the data and then the, the, the customer could ask nearly any question and we'll find the answers in the data we captured before. So um, in, in our data archive, it is always possible to, to ask us, okay, uh, I need some information from, let's say, the 1st of October 2020. Um, we had a problem in um, our area 15. Uh, could we have the data from this day and then we offer them the data and um, based on machine learning algorithms some of the uh, questions could be answered automatically and others could be answered manually so could be also an inspection task or is, if there is anything missing or if there was a damage or something else nearly everything is possible how long did the development of your software take because what i have in mind is is like um yes it's basically a, a software but when i went through like the old hoops and uh, ideas that i had like instantly in my mind i was wondering um how many drones did you smash against walls before it started working oh Oh my gosh, yeah. Um, when we start with the first prototype, uh, I think we crashed almost, yeah, between 30 and maybe 40 systems, which, which means in cash a lot, really a lot. Um, you, you need to know that we were responsible for um, the development of the first hardware we were using. So, When we started um, with Sox Innovation, there was no partner available which could offer a drone that was capable to do the job. Um, 
So we needed to find a way to to develop our own drone. And uh, yeah, to be very honest, drone development is nothing that that is 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 a, a, a job that makes you happy. Really not. Um, it's very complex, and you always will crash the the first prototypes. So uh, yeah, crashing was something that that was part of our development. And the question. How long did it take to to get the software ready? The answer is always too long. But I'm a business guy. The developers would tell you, um, "Yeah, we are pretty fast. We are we are very fast." Again, it's also pretty, pretty, pretty complex. You need to address many different areas. It's not only data management. It's navigation. Um, we really have great guys in our team um, where, who are responsible for for the automation. Sorry, you were going for just a very tiny moment. Um, one question, um, how are you guys actually managing to navigate inside a building? I assume it's a big building, but nonetheless, it's navigation inside a building, which isn't too easy, right? No, that's right. We are using more or less slam algorithm and different sensor technologies, so LiDAR, uh, stereo cameras, um, and some other sensors for the navigation. And um, it's a combination between global mapping and local mapping for all the geeks. Um, yeah, so so it's, it's very, 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 very complex. Um, and, and you need powerful hardware. <laughs> um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's not that easy, but to be very honest, it helps a lot that AGVs are more or less uh, a common thing now in in logistics or in some areas of of logistics. So um, all the automated automated driving things are very helpful for us. But we are navigating in X Y Z, which is pretty special. So having just something on the floor is not easy, but it's it's a solved challenge. But uh, X Y Z um, is is something special. So uh, you you're referring to the three axes because with a with a drone you're navigating within a three dimensional space, which means you cannot only hit something front, back, left, and right, but also up, down, and all the other angles uh, in between. Yeah, so so you need to have all the angles always in mind. Ha, and um, that is pretty interesting. You said you're also like pushing the development of drones. Um, how far are you guys are actually getting into the hardware or do you have like a co-development company that actually takes into account your requirements for the hardware? Unfortunately not. Um, we have a great partner for the AGV, a very great partner coming also from, from Germany. It's yeah, not a real startup, but I think uh, they are more or less a startup since uh, COVID nineteen also pushed their business not not to new dimensions, but more or less uh, on 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 uh, yeah in, in new areas. <laughs> um, so for the AGV part, we have a great partner. Uh, for the drone, we are using a standard drone, but this drone is not capable to fly indoors automatically. Um, so we really needed to find a way by ourselves how to do the job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, how much time you are you guys spending like on a drone until it can do what you guys are actually doing? Are we talking like uh, one day of refitting or like a month? Uh, you, you mean the implementation uh, at our customer site? Sorry, you, you, your connection was once again a little bit jumpy, so I had to uh, readjust the frame. Really sorry about that for our audience. No, uh, I'm, go I'm going at... You get the drone, and uh, how long does it take until uh, you put in all the fancy stuff like LiDAR, LiDAR, your software, and so on and so forth, until you can actually use it? Uh, it's something between three and five hours. Three and five hours. That sounds very reasonable. Um, what do you guys are currently 
looking for right now like in terms of uh partners like hardware uh if a drone manufacturer sees that um in terms of a uh, client's logistics lines and of course since we are talking here uh sponsored by invest in hessen are you looking for investors yeah so we will have our next big release end of october um there will be the new version of inventory on the market uh, and we are absolutely looking for customers. Um, we are very happy that we have some great and huge customers on our list right now, um, but always looking for new customers, um, especially from the U.S. Uh, we will move to the U.S. Uh, during um, the next year or within the next year. Um, investors are always welcome. <laughs> So I, I think the only answer you will get from a startup is investors are always welcome. Um, we will have our next uh, funding round um, in quarter one of 2021. Um, so if there is any interest, we are always happy uh, to get new contacts. Um, partners are very much welcome. So we are looking for sales and service partners globally. Um, and we are also looking for new technology partners, integration in WMS, integration in ERP systems, integration in warehouses uh, in general. This is something uh, where we need help. Absolutely. We will not have a facility in each, com in each country globally, um, but we will have our solutions globally. So we always need partners. Um, and we also need uh, some backup partners for uh, the drone and AGV part, since we really are looking forward uh, to hopefully a, a, a big growth of our company. Um, and yeah, it's always good to have, have different partners in different countries, since the drone regulations are globally on a different stage. So it's not possible to use our technology in all countries without restrictions. And I see. So there, there are like different drone regulations in Germany, in the EU, and in the US, for example. The, yeah, but it's not only the the, the drone thing. Uh, if you have a look on on the uh, Wi-Fi, um, then it's not possible to use the same Wi-Fi technology um, in Japan that you are using in the EU. So um, it's always good to have local partners which can help to get technology into the country. Um, yeah. I see. see. Uh, talking about the investors, you're looking at Series A, Series B. Uh, you would also be um, very much uh, looking for a US-based investor, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So for Series A, we are looking for international investors and also looking for investors from the US. Uh, have you have you set an eye on any location in the US yet, like New York or Silicon Valley or somewhere in the middle? Mm, no, um, we will not move to uh, the West Coast. We are looking for um, uh, yeah setting up something um, at the East Coast. Uh, we are in a good connection with some guys from Connecticut, so more or less uh, around New York, Boston, and so on and so on. Uh, we had some pilot projects in the very south of the U.S., um, and we see the yeah the south, the the East Coast, as well as um, the Midwest of the U.S. as the most promising areas. I see, I see, I see. We're talking now for more than 30 minutes. Admittedly, our viewers will not see everything because we did have some issues in the meantime with the internet connection. Nonetheless, we are talking uh, in an interview sponsored by Invest in Hessen. You guys are still in Hessen, even though you're at the very northern top uh, in terms of cities of the state. Um, what do you like about the, the state and um, what does it mean for you? I think Hasse is doing a great job when it comes to startups. Uh, they have um, great offerings from, from the state side, uh, absolutely. Uh, they are very much interested in pushing um, startups 
so that they are visible on 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 the on the entrepreneur or startup map in Germany, but also in 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 Europe. Um, and when it comes to North Hesse, I also could tell you that um, the local uh, business agencies from the state side they support us very very much, very very much. So we have a research project together with uh, the uh, state organization for North Hesse here. Um, and we have really great events um, that were organized from uh, from the state side. So yeah, I think Hesse is pretty much interested in pushing startup business. Great final words. There's actually nothing more I have to ask about you. It, thank you very much. It was a pleasure having you. Sorry to all the listeners and audience for the interruptions, uh, but that's the only thing we could do in times of Corona with our internet connection. Thank you, Benjamin, for being a guest. It was a pleasure having you and uh, finger thumbs pressed for the release of your newest, uh, newest version, which will be just approximately two weeks down the road from this publication. So everybody who's listening to this, have a look at the website of the company. Of course, go down here in the show notes. There will be a link to our blog post. And of course, in the blog post, there's a link not only to your LinkedIn profile, but also to the company's website. Thank you. That's all, folks. Find more news, streams, events, and interviews at www.startuprad.io. Remember, sharing is caring.